Got more space, more shelf space to put more stuff oh so we can grow. Oh my goodness, that is the best thing I've ever we seen. We can grow, which is the whole, this, well, the place, I'm going to write, the place looks great. The place looks great. For those of you who are wondering what is going on. Jacob says it looks gorgeous. Um, we are not, in fact, two <laughs> New York ladies. <laughs> Well, of advanced age. My spirit animal is. Yeah. We mm. are actually putting mm. on what they call accents. Yeah. Um, <laughs> accents. Welcome to the Accent Podcast. The Today accent we'll be podcast. delving into <laughs> to New York ladies. <laughs> ladies in their 60s. In New York. Yes. Um, oh, in the East Coast. Yeah, I suppose East Coast. You could say, yeah, no, East that's pretty specifically kind of New York, isn't it? I would know because I, you know, my, my accents in the East Coast are, are very general because I've actually never been there. Mm. So I'm kind of like, right. I think this is the idea. I've seen a few Scorsese movies. Sure, and that's all you need. That's all you need yeah. to know. My 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 wife's family. My wife is uh, is Jewish, mm-hmm. and her family uh, is comes from New York. Ah, so I've got uh, I've got aunts and. Uh, and, nice. and like and and cousins, so you've, you've heard it firsthand. Who uh, who are from out there, and it's my my favorite thing. Yeah, to talk with them because. They're like, they just, I love the accent. I think it's just so, so classic and wonderful. It's just beautiful. It is great. Um, I just sipped out of my coffee tumbler backwards. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It was a good move. Hmm. You know, what's funny is that the, on that point, while we're, while we're delving into this area, they're like our cousins, Talia's cousins, the children don't have the same accent. Huh. So I don't know if like there was something from that era, that time that there was a, like if there was shows on at that point, if there was some kind of, I don't know if there's some popular... Yeah. Whatever, but like that 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 accent didn't necessarily didn't necessarily pass on to her cousins who kind of you know, they almost they almost just sound like like if you were to go to a drama school and say what is standard American what is standard American? Yeah. You know, it's like they just they just sound kind of like Americans. Well, I know, I'm well uh, look <laughs> like not like East Coast Americans. Like they just sound like just broad, general. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in all honesty, I think that uh where I come from in Oklahoma, the country accent that when you, you know, like I grew up around a lot of kids that absolutely had kind of a country accent. Like a twang. And, yeah, yeah, and and I did not and and my brother did not and so Huh. Um, it probably comes out in certain words, but it's just interesting how I, I, I don't know. I never let myself fall into it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And so maybe well, that's a, I, maybe there's a choice behind it. And I wonder way. if younger people, cause you know, the cousins I'm talking about, they're like our age or younger. Yeah. Um, like I wonder if, if growing up in a world that has so much access to it, like you can, you can, you communicate with people all over America. Yeah. Like what is, and there's more access to media. There's more access to just other options. You're not That's just, true. you're not just talking to your friends at school and your teachers and whatever else. Nerd. I wonder if, if we're kind of amalgamating into one American boring accent yeah. across the country. Yeah. Or, and over, over time, time I'm global. I yeah. wonder if there'll be like a global, we all kind of speak the same thing. It'll be English. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just, <laughs> no, that was a total joke. Our, that was a total joke. That was a total joke. Our fans, I, from other, our fans in France, I, I was our kidding. French fans are going to murder be us. livid. I know. No, that's a joke because that's a very American thing to say. Yeah. And I don't necessarily feel that. I'd love to learn another language. Um, cause I, I know a little bit of Spanish. Yeah. Um, I've picked up key phrases here and there from other languages, but, uh, mostly inappropriate things because yeah. that's what happens when you, totally. when you meet somebody from another country, they teach you a sentence and you're like, can I say that in polite conversation? They're like, absolutely like, not. No, please don't. Don't say that in polite conversation. <laughs> you American jerk. Say that in impolite conversation, yes. Yes. which is most conversations. Yes. No, right. but, but, uh, it, it, uh, th- that wasn't actually what I was going to say. What's so funny. I went, they talk about tangential, but worth it. That mm-hmm. whole accent conversation yeah. had nothing to do with what I was going to say. What I was going to say is we just moved into a new facility. Our, now, obviously, we're still in the right. same place. So if right. you're watching the podcast, you're like, no, you're like, you, no, you, didn't. you didn't. You're still there. Okay. Our our sales, corporate, and production studio is going to be in Pasadena, for mm-hmm. those of you who want to stalk us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that'll be, we'll be doing that starting next month. Great. That's when we'll be out there. Um, but our facility for producing emissions reducing additives mm-hmm. uh, was moved to Sacramento. And that part's been done. And, and I just got pictures from Mike. The, we talk about Mike a lot. And the, yes, we do. Yes, we do. I got uh, pictures from Mike, and he sent, uh, yeah, sent us what the what you know what the place looks like. And uh, man, 
What a slick spot we got up there. It is really slick. We're going to be it visiting it late, nice. later this month, see yeah. it in person. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. We look like we know what we're doing, <laughs> which I'm is great. I'm very excited about yeah, it. It's just I really it's clean, really well organized, really, you know. It we're looks going, gorgeous. I could not be more proud of Michael and his warehouse. I could not be more warehouse. proud of what Michael's doing. <laughs> He's so great. He's such a wonderful kid. Yes, yeah, such a wonderful kid. I'm worried that this might be a little too high and covering your face. <sighs> I always see that after we're done recording. Our mics were moved around a little bit, obviously. Because everything's moving around a little bit, and so we're going to get. If you can't see my face, call in. Call in. Okay. Uh, we moved uh, it well enough. That's good. <laughs> so we moved it well enough. No, but we're going to dive right in. I okay. mean, we did five minutes on accents, but that's di- <laughs> <laughs> that's diving in for the Biofriendly Podcast. Speaking of, welcome to the Biofriendly Podcast. I'm Jacob, and I'm Noel, and we're going to get right in because we still have a lot to do. And there's we a do? lot going on. Yes, <sighs> lots lots of work to do. So we're going to get this done. Okay. And uh, you know how last week you confessed to the audience? You were like, look, guys, we had to record this one, you know, the day before and all that. Well, this one, we can honestly tell you, this is happening the day of. Yeah, you're seeing this in, a, in like an hour. In an hour yeah. from now. We're only an hour ago exactly yeah. so this is this is live it's li- it's li- <laughs> live it's, as not. We, it's not live <laughs> but it is right now it is november 7th the day the podcast releases and yeah. we're doing it hours before yeah so i found a cool subject today that i thought was kind of fun um this was basically there was a competition recently to come up with like cutting edge ways to refreeze the arctic yeah refreeze <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Let's 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 hear it. Let's hear it. So, um, an international design competition, the runner-up, appealing for radical approaches to sustainability, is the latest series of new proposals for refreezing the Earth's poles. Okay, okay. so led by twenty-nine-year-old architect Ferris Rajak Kataha Tuaha. I practiced that one a little bit before we started. Was that? Did you get it right or did you practice it wrong? I, like I would love. Of course, at home, I practiced it wrong. If you're home, you're like Kuaka, Klautu, Varata, Niktu. I just opened the Book of the Dead with that one. Um, no, but I was walking. I was like, as I was waiting for you to get up here, I was practicing the phrasing. So I probably practiced it wrong, but it looks right, I, like how I would say it. Yeah. Um, so him and a, a team they envis- envisaged. A submersible vessel capable of producing a 16-foot thick, 82-foot wide hexagonal iceberg. Okay. So basically, they did it. So dis- under the ocean. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna drop these things every. So how how, how much of us? It's a, a, it, it is 18. I mean, 16 feet thick, yeah. 82 feet wide. Yeah. Hexagonal iceberg. So it looks like a honeycomb. Okay, okay, right? okay. Okay, so you put one every uh, 164 feet. You got to put one of these down, and then you make a little honeycomb of... So we're going to need... That's a great business, man. So what's great about it? Is it so essentially... Instead of, fixing, instead of fixing the environment, let's pay for a bunch of, uh, a bunch of just of these little devices to throw every... <laughs> Well, How big is the Arctic? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I've got some fun facts for you. I've okay. got some fun facts for you. So I read it, and first of all, I was like, this is the s- most biofriendly <laughs> podcast topic ever, uh, because essentially, if you're not following along, it's a submarine that makes ice cubes for the Arctic. <laughs> so it's a giant ice-making machine. So essentially, yeah. you know, they're going to be followed around by like a giant tea making... No, I'm kidding. It's the iced tea. <laughs> um, but they like... The idea – now, this is not a real thing that exists yet. No, it's it was a contest. A, it was a competition yeah. for creative ways, and these guys came up. They were like, technically, we could have this submarine, and on the submarine, it has this thing where it scoops up the salt water. Scoop and it then up. it has a process that drains out the salt of the, of the other thing, and then it freezes this block of ice over the course of one month. And then after one month, it drops this massive hexagon of ice in the ocean, and there, there it goes. And then they do it again and again and again. And then they begin to interlock like a honeycomb. So when you look at the pictures of the design, it looks like kind of like pixelated. You know, it's like really fascinating to see. Yeah. Um, but they, they would then start to connect together. And then slowly over time, you would begin to rebuild all these ice sheets and it would be freezing and bringing up more and more cold temperatures and reflecting the the sunlight like uh-huh. it's supposed to. Yeah. So that's the idea. And I, when I read it, I was like, yeah, it seems kind of far-fetched. And there's some criticism, which I'll go to in a second, of course. But 
Isn't that kind of cool? It's adorable. It's a. Ador- <laughs> <laughs> we here at the. I, I hope that they could use that when they're like when they're pitching it around to companies. It says the biofriendly podcast says it's, it's adorable. adorable. <laughs> Oh my god. That's okay. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I mean, what the heck? It gives you something to do. Give me some. Look, we're all going to hell in a handbasket. We gotta make up some ideas no, as I we just, go. No, I love I'm to kidding. look at this from both perspectives. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna look at this from the perspective of the yeah. hardcore environmentalist, okay. which is which which I imagine is yeah. what's the point of refreezing the poles when yeah. we just continue to burn up the atmosphere right, because right. we started a cycle of action that is impossible to stop right. and it'll just go worse and worse and worse and it's going to then melt that honeycomb and then you're just going to be basically wasting more energy and producing more greenhouse gases to then produce ice cubes that are just going to melt right. and what's the point we're all going to die and go eat it yeah yeah and then i think look at the guys on the other side uh, who are who are, who are going to say oh oh that's oh great good so we're going to spend however many Billions of dollars to put a bunch of submarines and put hexagons <laughs> on something that we've only been monitoring <laughs> since 1977, and we right. have no idea actually uh, wh- what the what the native state of the Arctic is anyway. Yeah. And so you've gone and wasted all this money this time doing that, and you're a bunch of idiots. Right. And then you get the biofriendly podcast that says, which is it's adorable. It's adorable. <laughs> And so that's the different. <laughs> those are the only perspectives you could have on this on the giant ice making submarine. I think. I think that. I think that. Um, like, we can finish this if you want to no, talk no, about no, it. No, no, yeah, I no, 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 no. My honest opinion is I think, opinion. I think it's I think it's kind of cool that they're out there. Like, but people are like, oh, if theoretically, if you want to do this. And that remember, we're talking theoretical. This was a contest. So mm-hmm. so we can't mm-hmm. be too hard on somebody who comes up with like, oh, yeah. so you wanted a theory of how to do this. Here's here's a way you could do it. Yeah, and I think it's awesome. He's 23. He's too, 23. So he's, awesome. got, he's got he's got, you know, he's an like, idea. He's like, here's an idea for technology. It would be kind of cool. And you can honeycomb it together and you can yeah. fix it. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. And that's why, and they say it's adorable. <laughs> Because it would never, you can't, why, no. why would exactly. you do it? Why would you do this Why thing? would you do it? But how awesome to have come up with it. It's a, it's a clever idea. Um, I love the drawings of it because it just looks like the best gig ever. Yeah. It looks like they're on this, they're on this very James Bond, sleek looking submarine. You know, it's all angular, very Apple store. And they've got these ice blocks that are being launched out of the submarine. And I was like, that would be just a cool, be like, where are you interning this winter? You know, it's like, yeah. well, I'm making ice cubes in the Arctic. <laughs> but, you know, that's my job. I'm just cruising yeah. around, just, yeah. just making ice cubes. Yeah. Um, but they, uh, but yeah, and I think it would be cool if you could, like, why does it have to be a hexagon? Like, you know, when you get those ice trays yeah. that have different shapes, yeah. you could get like batarangs, <laughs> you could get Han Solo's. You know, like, why does it have to just be the hexagon? That is so biofriendly podcast after our talk about panda Panda, shaped solar panels and everything else. If I'm going to make giant ice cubes. I mean, all right. So, yeah, like you made me think of there's this this uh, this gift that that, uh, Santa gave to my son Uh many years ago, uh, which was these cats. It's a bunch of cats that interlock and connect each other to make like a cat puzzle thing or you can make a new cat cube or whatever else. But you have to figure out the puzzle of how the cats are all going to fit. Yeah. And that's what that, that like my immediate thing was that's hilarious. So we got a bunch of different objects. We're like we're we're making the custom ice blocks to go throughout there and put together. Um, but like the problem is the reason they're hexagons is because they 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 can they can merge yeah. easily. Yeah. They can form it. They can bounce into each other and right, then create right. one ice block easily. But how yeah. hilarious if someone's like, no, no, we're gonna do custom shapes that have to puzzle together. Yeah, custom <laughs> shapes like a bo- like a like a bowl of Lucky Charms, <laughs> like purple hearts. You know? uh, yeah, <laughs> yellow, green clovers, yellow moons, <laughs> well, pink well, diamonds. And what's so fun is purple heart shows. <laughs> It's these specific puzzles and shapes. And then we do it. We accomplish it. And then a thousand years from now, they look at the Arctic and they're like, it's a rainbow fruit flavor. Well, like, what <laughs> happened here? Like, where? Why? Like, there was no recording of, that we've oh, done it. Yeah, well, because we're all dead. Yeah, we're all dead. So, so we die. And, and then so they the find survivors the Arctic think, yes. and they're like, yeah. the Arctic is in the shape of Lucky Charms. We don't know how that happened, but anyway. We found this ancient, <laughs> ancient fossil. These shapes. Fossilized, fossilized Lucky Charms box. Yeah. And we've noticed that it matches what's in the Arctic. Yeah. This means that aliens must have come down. Come down and made shapes. And one of them shaped like Han Solo, because that survived the apocalypse. Of course too. it did. That's the only yeah. thing that will uh, survive. Star Wars will survive. Yeah. Um, but if J.J. Uh, if Abrams doesn't kill it. Maybe <laughs> be... <laughs> That's a whole other... Oh! Bo- oh, oh! Look at your sound wave. <laughs> it just blew up. You spat on me. Did I? You spat on me. I'm, I'm, wiping, I'm wiping off my arm. I'm getting back to you, you for last week. That there are diseases? <laughs> I'm just kidding.
Um, it's my revenge. Okay. Fair, um, enough. Fair enough. Okay. So criticism wise, uh, Andrew Shepard, professor of here comes the buzz. Oh, now they're going to criticize. Okay. okay here comes kid. the buzz kills. Okay. The buzz kills. Ready? Right. Andrew Shepard, p- professor. Right. Hold <laughs> it, Andrew Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> professor at the University of Leeds, Leeds University, believes the solution is promising but difficult to apply in real <laughs> life. Really? <Yeah. laughs> Shepard said it would take ten million of these submarines. <laughs> Of course, it's impossible to apply. Of course. So here's this kid. He wins a science project, and here comes Andrew Shepard. He's like a jerk from Leeds. Yeah. Well, I don't know. This is feasible. It's a good idea, but we need ten million dollars. We don't understand the cost. This is it worth the return on investment? Well, I don't think this is a disaster. This is a complete and utter disaster. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix is dead. <laughs> what? Why was I not involved? Uh, okay. So uh, anyway, so that he said that's a lot. Lot of machines to build for context that's not far off the total number of model t fords built in all time so that's just to okay give you some that's a stupid thing to say i know right Do you know, no i'm sorry Back. this is not jake i'm talking about the article the all total model t fords built of all time yeah. okay model t fords were like the first mass production car of course right, there right. aren't going to be a lot of model t fords yeah now if he had said as as compared to all of the ford explorers built of all time yeah. then i'd be impressed yeah 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 yeah. model yeah. t fords model t fords no oh, they've got calm a, down you know andrew shepherd andrew shepherd you are no you are no <laughs> your invite to this podcast has been revoked canceled because andrew shepherd is, is canceled we're gonna i'm gonna stick up for this poor this kid i can you know i'm glad you're taking this approach because i know it's preposterous but i had Admire his his chutzpah. The, here's the thing that's so dumb, but the the, the question yeah. is preposterous. Yes. How do we refreeze the article? How do we article? refreeze the article? Come <laughs> on. Well, what happened was it was the Come planting on. the planting trees got the people of the ice worlds. Like yeah. people, they were like, well, we want to do something too. We got to refreeze the Arctics. Whereas, whereas like the tree planters are like, look, man, we put a seed into a ground and water it and it works. You can't go up to the Arctic and just, you know, get a, a fan and just hope you're going to cool everything off. But that's exactly what's going on right now. Okay. So was, was second place a giant fan? <laughs> second place, no, <laughs> I am so glad before I get to that. Hold on. Um, so we finish off the criticism real yeah, quick? Yeah, one so more cri- criticism, yeah. and then I'm going to move on to something funny, um, That because uh, nothing has been funny up until this point. Um, so this other person, um, uh, Carly Casella, in an article for Science Alert, stressed that contrary to widespread belief, uh, melting icebergs do not contribute to rising sea levels. Um, so she's like, you know, that's not necessarily going to change anything. That's true. And then she says, is also skeptical of how the submarine would fundamentally operate. And does she explain why that? Why, yeah. Because she's, it, cause if she doesn't, I will. Yeah. I, you, you would probably do a better job. So you do it. She just she just says it doesn't. You know, okay. they're already floating. In you the go ocean. to the you go to this to the uh, uh, the McDonald's, which we all go to because we're all environmentally friendly people. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and we want to eat meat. Yeah. Yeah. You go to. Well, no. OK. You're going to your your vegan based restaurant that you found okay that is serving veggie uh, grill yeah you're going to veggie grill and you're going up to the the ice water machine okay to mm-hmm. get your water or your or your sustainable fruit juice sure and you pour ice into your cup okay okay mm-hmm. and then all your cup made your, from bamboo from bamboo and then you take that cup and then you put in your lemonade uh-huh okay so your lemonade is in your cup full of ice right now you get busy in a great conversation or you're listening to a hit podcast and you can't you can't stop right. listening to it right? right right and all of the ice in the cup melts melts does the amount of liquid in the cup change no no oh. because the volume is the same <gasps> did you just drop some serious knowledge mic drop from no that's right yeah. so the the issue is not whether or not the Arctic is going to melt, the issue is more the Antarctic because that is not floating in the water. That right. is that is snow that is on land, right? That's exactly Greenland is what snow she said. On land, that's that's what we're that's more we're concerned about, and that takes longer to defrost. That is, you nailed it. You are a scientist. You are a brilliant man <laughs> because this scientist here in this article said it's not about the stuff that's in the water. It's yeah, about the stuff that's in the land. We don't need to refreeze the Arctic. We need. But to it's hilarious. Basically, we need to get the snow and the ice that's on land. We need to get that. And then she also said, and by the way, building these mini submarines is just putting a lot more greenhouse gases back into the atmosphere. So she's like, it kind of counteracts the thing. So there's a lot of criticism. <laughs> there's a lot okay. of criticism. But again, again. I'm going to stick up for this poor kid. Yeah. This kid wasn't asked, hey, yeah. can you come up with a solution right. for global warming? Yeah. They said, can you refreeze the Arctic? Yeah. So and- if someone says to you, hey... Can you reanimate 
this dead monkey. Yes. And, and he you said, come up with some kind of ridiculous, energy he, intensive, stupid way to reanimate the monkey. And people he did are going to say, what is, the, what is the practicality of reanimating a monkey? And he's like, I was asked and he's to like, do I it. I was asked to do this dumb, stupid friggin' thing. There's Leave a, me alone. There's a $5,000 prize. Back off, man. Back off. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to pay my college loans. Right. <laughs> so he, he goes, so, so basically, what I was going to say is now the criticism's done. And, okay. and, and, and I want to get to the point is you said, you said earlier, you said, um, what were the other ideas, you know, for <laughs> this thing? <laughs> so, okay. So the, the other two, which they don't get into too much, you can dig deeper, but, uh, it says somebody came up with sprinkling them with artificial sand to reflect the sun. Great. Uh, light. Then the other one was blasting seawater into the sky to brighten the clouds. <laughs> That's great. That's great. But this is what I was confused by <laughs> during my research. This is what I was confused by during my research. It kept talking about every article. If you go find Refreeze the Arctic, if you go on Bing <laughs> and you search for it, it will you will find this article about the submarine. I'm you so will sorry. find it over and over and over again. Yeah. And in every article, it says the runner up, the runner up, the runner up. And I kept going, why are there so many articles about the person who came in second on this ASA design, international design competition, why right. is everybody only talking? That's a about, good question. Like, why? What? Who won first place? So right. I go to the actual site because I'm digging everywhere, like first place, ASA, international design competition. Right. And I'm looking around and I finally find it on their site. And then I realized all of a sudden why everybody was talking about the ice submarine thing and not the first prize winner. Because the first prize winner was called the Eternal Sustainability. Uh, a new type of eco crematorium to reutilize our dead body back to nature. All right, drop this one on me. <laughs> so, I, all I know from this is I realized this was a crematorium for human bodies that basically will help get bodies back into the earth, re free, feed the soil, and make the earth you know, release, you know, absorb more carbon, do all that. That was the plan. But I realized right then and there, the ASA gave these people the first place prize for this genius idea, but nobody in the news wanted to talk about a crematorium. crematorium. Everybody was like, uh, let's talk about the ice cube tray submarine. Let's not talk about it. So, that's hilarious. Because, because it's more interesting to talk about things that are just... Well, yeah, like totally like, out there. Preposterous. And, and, and preposterous. This right, is so no. Th so the winner. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta yeah. see this. Oh, here. This okay. Is, so, right, so tell uh, us. Tell us about the winner. Because okay. I'm, so it says. Because I still don't get it. I know. I don't either. A new type of eco crematorium to reutilize our dead body back to nature. The new eco crematorium is a project which is standing somewhere between the research possibility and the surreal vision, leading us to question on the sensitive topics, the modern funeral and the modern graveyard. Okay. So. So it's basically the new eco crematorium integrated into the typical empty or unbuilt space of each city, creating the new type of public space and serving as the eco crematorium itself underground in parallel. So they don't there's a whole bunch of diagrams and charts and science research into this that I don't quite understand or I haven't really dug into because it was dark. But what I thought was weird was is they have the crematorium underground of a major area in the city. So you're just like walking around playing b-ball out shooting hoops with shooting some friends. Some friends on b-ball outside of the school when a couple of guys are up to no good. <laughs> start making trouble, trouble in the neighborhood. There's got a one little fight. My mom got scared. Said you move with the Aldi and Uncle Bel Air. And you said I got to get out of here because I'm standing on top of an eco crematorium. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's here's the here's the problem with them winning the contest and why yeah. nobody's talking about it. Why? Is because they did not come up with a solution to refreeze the Arctic. Yes. They yes. came up with a solution that helps. Global warming that yes. helps climate change. Yes. And if those were the terms of the agreement, then I think it's crap yes. that they won the contest. Yeah. And I feel bad for these kids getting criticized. Yes. For coming up with, with actually so actual solutions yeah. to the stupid question that was asked in the first place. Yeah. Because if you're saying, what's about, okay, how about this? How about we use an additive that reduces uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 7%? Right. That would help yeah. refreeze the Arctic. Yeah. What a bunch of buttheads. <laughs> I'm, what a bunch whole, of buttheads. Reason, Noel Carroll. The, the reason nobody is talking about the first place winner in this is because the first place winner cheated. This is crap. Yeah. They yeah. took, they, 
they went for a solution that was just an eco, a general eco-friendly solution, and it's right. an advertisement for a stupid form of doing crap with our bodies. <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> He's upset. Well, I, I want to spend. I want Doctor Leeds University to go. To go I to want town Andrew. On that guy. I want Andrew Shepard to go like. Well, let me tell you <laughs> something about bodies and grounds. <laughs> here's, here's, here's your situation. Now. <laughs> there is a movement to find an eco-friendly way to cremate our bodies in order to reduce the amount of air pollution that's going into the environment. It's a fantastic idea, except it completely <laughs> goes against the, the spirit of the game. <sighs> the idea was how are we going to refreeze the Arctic? <laughs> they came up with something they're not even doing. There's no part of the Arctic at all. What happened to my submarines? What happened to my reflective mirrors? Why can't I spray water into the sky to make the clouds more fluffy? <laughs> Why don't I throw sand on the <laughs> building <laughs> ice? <laughs> like what? Wow. Oh. Um, this is, I'm hopped this, up on this. This has been a moment with Noel. <laughs> I am so upset. Yeah. This so, whole thing is like, this it's is, preposterous. Uh, it's a disaster. Because, all right, if you take, because the only way you can accept this is that it's a fun, stupid game. And yeah. as a fun, stupid game, you have a lot of really creative, <laughs> impossible yeah. solutions. And yeah. all of those really creative, impossible solutions should have won money. And I'm upset <laughs> that these kids who came up with them aren't going to get money to go towards their college. I agree. Uh, I, I mean, they may have. I don't know. I don't know what the prize was for the ASA for, International Design Competition. So maybe, I think they, maybe they got something like a second place. I thing. sent them all tumblers. <laughs> well, it's something. <laughs> it's it's some, something. They all got hey, tumblers. When BioFriendly has our contests, and we and I want to have one preposterous contest a year. That's I think that'll be fun. That goes towards your towards yeah. your college debt and or scholarship. The prepon test. The prepon test. <laughs> the preponster test. I, 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 yeah, because that because <laughs> now that they've done that, I, that was kind of that was fun. Yeah, it's, like, it's fun to say okay. Let, I, all right, let's. Kentucky wants a stairway to Mars. Yes. Hey, we came up we with that. We know that. We know that's true. Stairway to Mars. So please figure out a way to build a to stairway. To make it work that you could actually yeah. have a stairway to Mars. Yeah, it is. It's a fun engineering challenge. And it's like, look, if you had hundreds of trillions of dollars to spend and you could do whatever you wanted, could this be a solution? And I think that that's the heart of what the Arctic submarine and freezing the, the caps were. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the thing that I thought was. I don't get what this eco crematorium was, but the the thing that I got from the end of it, I was like, I was like, okay, here's all these other really, ex like out there, out of the box, Willy Wonka, like this is crazy. We're gonna do this. We're gonna shoot liquid into the sky. We're gonna freeze ice cubes. And right. then there was the graveyard, and I was like, they won first place. And I was like, is was it because it was an actual manageable idea that could be accomplished or what I don't know but nobody is giving press on that on that first prize winner because it's bull honky <laughs> yeah. it's not the question that was asked yeah. it is not the question that was asked doing it that's coming up with another climate change solution as a business is not what was asked mm -hmm. That is, yeah. Will that eventually, over over time, do things that make a difference to make it less freezing in the Arctic, or yeah. to make it more freezing in the Arctic? That's yeah. okay, probably. Sure, sure. That's not what. That's that's, that's so dumb. Yeah. I'm ups I'm massively upset. Call now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell. I wish. I really wish. Sometimes this was like a radio show in the morning where you could take a caller because I would love it in these moments that you could be like, <laughs> like. You know, some guy from the East Coast like, hey, no, this, I disagree. You're the dummy. And you're like, you're the dummy. No, you're the dummy. <laughs> and we just get this talk radio. Hey. <laughs> Your New York lady accent is terrible. Your New York lady accent's a crap. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's a travesty. <laughs> it's travesty. No, but it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, uh, so essentially that was it. I, 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 I saw a article about freezing the Arctic and I was like, that is the most biofriendly topic we've had in weeks. It is. And I'm glad we did that. Cause I feel like we've been, we've been, uh, we've, we've been, been, been a little tired. A little we have bit, been tired. A little it's, bit off our game. And for that, I apologize to the audience. It, it's been difficult because, and thank you for riding with us this whole time. Um, yeah, because over the past couple of weeks, it's been like, we got to do this podcast and, and like we're in Vegas and we are like, well, let's just do it about Vegas. And we're going to throw right. it in last minute when we can, when the sun, going down you right. know so but this time i saw it and and given the reaction that it got out of Noel, i know that we're back in business baby <laughs> <laughs> these are good biofriendly topics because yeah. it's more it's more fun to talk about it is more fun there's there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of uh creative minds out there and and that kid uh you know at his age and his group of friends like to put their time and energy 
and coming up with these creative solutions, I mean, that will lead to other ideas and other creative well, solutions. That's that's, that's, that's the, the point of it, right? That's the thing. That's right. that's why you have a contest contest that asks something ridiculous. Is right. Because you get people to think way outside the box, and then people, yeah. in thinking way outside the box, you come up with stuff that is practical. Yeah. And that's really good that you have yeah. stuff that's practical that you can come back with. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that there's a crematorium. I think it's fine. I still don't think they should have won no, the first I just, prize. I was just going <laughs> to say, I, the, everybody did great except for the first pri- prize winner. That guy can just go home with his twisted eco crematorium and get his weird macabre sensibilities <laughs> and shove them up his patootie. No, I'm no, I mean, look, <laughs> if he's going to do something that helps the environment and that and yeah. that eventually refreezes the Arctic. Yeah. God, that's funny. I want to see um, that competition, though, because you have the on stage, you have the kid going like, oh, let's put ice cubes in the Arctic. Yeah. And then they cut over to this kid who's on, uh, in all black and he's like, it's an eco crematorium. <laughs> <laughs> But it, you know, you look at the you look at the way that's put. I yeah. I am gonna bet donuts to, to Danishes to do- <laughs> that that was put to, that the solution was put together by a company that already had that crematorium in place and was yeah. already doing and, and it was a total cheat. Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna research it because I don't have time. It was probably John's pantyhose. We know ever since they dropped us from the show, yeah, they was, have gotten into the graveyard business. Jerks. Jerks. I mean, we liked them when they were sponsors, but now... Not in, dead to us. They're dead to us. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, that's their business. <laughs> dead to us. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think anyway, we better get back down. We better get back get down to, to work. It's moving, yes, some, moving yeah, some more yeah. stuff. All right. Well, this has been the Biofriendly Podcast, your beacon of light in a gloomy environment. Sound years ahead of the competition. Saving the world eventually. Tantamount. So glorious. So handsome. Tangential. But worth it. I mean, that's the most flawless one we've ever done. That's a good sign. High five. High five. America. America. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I we mean, love and you. world. <laughs> and okay. world. We, and can't, every- we can't make that joke anymore, really, because it's a worldwide podcast. It is world. We're to be global. like, oh, America. I love America. But I mean, I do love America. But, I love America. But we're global. But I do love the world, too. Yeah. We love you all. Yeah. World. World. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> It's the Bio-Friendly Podcast. It's the Bio-Friendly Podcast.